Good morning everyone. Welcome back to the Bros of Decay. I'm Leslie and today I got another very special episode for you all. It's very cold here in the morning. I think it's almost freezing point when I'm sitting here in my t-shirt and my swim shorts. But anyway, I'm, I'm in the state of Georgia right now. And today we got a beautiful time capsule home to show you. Literally everything is left behind in there and I'm so excited to explore this place today. As you can see, we had this hotel yesterday, wonderful lakeside behind us, the start of a mountain chain right in the back there and just such a fantastic place. Ah, I'm enjoying myself, but ah, let's get it over with. I've been, <laughs> I've been postponing it a lot, a long time, but they have a swimming pool here on the top of the hotel. And I said yesterday night, I need to take a swim in this one. So I gotta do it. Oh, it's probably ice cold water. I like to do this before I go exploring. Oh, this is cold. So that I'm very active and that I have a lot of energy. But this one is really cold. Okay, here we go. T-shirt off. Oh. Yes, and now let's take a nice dive into the pool. And now it's time to get a coffee and start this exploration. Let's go. So we have just made it to the abandoned property that we're gonna film today. What a wonderful place it is. Truly a typical American house from the 1950s when it was built. There's even the car of the former family that lived here, left behind outside. That's just wonderful. I'm not sure about the brand, but I think it's a Buick. The roof has completely collapsed on top of this car. And if it's all right, this door over here should be open and we should be able to enter into the house. Welcome inside. In today's journey, we ventured deep into the outskirts of Alabama, where we stumbled upon an eerie yet captivating scene, a completely furnished house that has been abandoned for decades. Through our research, the mystery deepened as we discovered the last inhabitant, Mrs. Tad, tragically passed away on the couch inside the house and due to cost savings, she was buried in her own backyard. Before she passed away, she spent over two decades living here alone. Her children stopped visiting and there was hardly anyone who cared for her. Adding to her loneliness, her husband passed away in the 70s, leaving her without her beloved soulmate for decades. This tale dates back over three decades and astonishingly, no one, not even the children, seem to care about the belongings that have been left behind. Once a happy family's home, now it stands as a desolate time capsule, a testament to the past happiness of Mr. Leo, Mrs. Dad and their three beloved children. With a touch of sadness and intrigue, 
we invite you to join us on this journey where we unveil their forgotten story. Let me sit down for a moment because I have to correct myself. In the beginning of the video, when I was sitting at the pool, I said that we were in the state of Georgia. But actually, we are in the state of Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. And this place that I'm in today is truly magnificent. All the furniture that's still in here is from the 1950s. And this place got built by the father of this woman that lived here as the last person in the beginning of the 1900s. It's probably more than a hundred years old, this place, and yeah, it's so beautiful, in a beautiful state of decay, and I can't wait to show you what's in here. I haven't figured out her name yet, so we're gonna go through this place, and we're gonna see if we perhaps can find what the name of this woman was, so we can get a better picture of who she was, what she did in life, and why this place is left behind like this. It's always a mystery when you find a place like this. You're always asking you that question like, how in the world would anybody leave all these memories and these valuable antiques inside of these places? I have no answer for it, but I can show you all these places and I can show you what's left behind in them. And we find ourselves right now in the bedroom of the place. And I believe that this was the last room that this woman slept in. This was her last bedroom. Because as you see it a lot. She came to the age of 85 years old and old people mostly sleep on the downstairs floors because they can't get to the upper floors anymore. It's just too difficult for them. We still see a lot of things laying on the bed. Bed sheets, books. Let your name be sec sanctified. That's a word I've never heard before. There's also some weird transcription on the bottom of it. It's not a Bible, I think. I think it's just a story. It's just a story. Yeah. But there is a newspaper inside of here. Perhaps it holds, it holds a date. And maybe this was also the last book that she was writing or that she was reading. How well Heflin it says on the letter. And it says over here that's from January 1983. Okay, it's from the state of Alabama. It's probably, like I said before, the last book that she was reading. Her pillows are still on there. Even one of her blouses is still left behind here. Wow. We've got this wonderful picture hanging on the wall. It's actually also a very lovely bed that she slept in. And definitely like the looks of it. It's made in the 1950s, 1960s. The decay is already very present throughout this place. Leakage problems, decay, roof panels falling off, it's just falling apart. But it has been abandoned for a long time. So you'd suspect something like this to happen. We got this wonderful organ here in the middle of our, of our living room or our, our bedroom, I should say. And I presume that she would play this one before she went to bed and maybe also in the morning. Castor oil, laxative. Okay. And I love this little painting that we have over here. It's a very small piece, most likely made by her. And we have another magazine that's completely covered with mold behind here. A wonderful organ. A television standing here in the corner with still a phone book above it. Phone books, those are something from the past and yeah, we couldn't imagine nowadays using them. Even a vintage telephone standing beside it. I can't remember ever using one of those. A sewing machine left here. We haven't seen many sewing machines in our United States series yet, but here we have another one. The brand is not displayed on this machine. I'm not sure what kind of machine it was. Oh, the machine is still left behind underneath this cover. It's a piece of fabric wrapped around here and it says that it's a Franklin, I think. Yeah, Franklin. Okay, a rotary sewing machine. 
What a beautiful piece. And then this is the chair that I was just sitting on, here standing in the middle of the living of our bedroom. I've seen a lot of abandoned homes in the United States and these places always have a rocking chair somewhere inside of the house. It's a very common piece of furniture in the United States, but we don't see it that much in abandoned places in Europe. I also love the mechanism that's down here. This part stays still and the upper part moves. And even it's fully upholstered. The seat is fully upholstered, but it's falling apart. Wow. An enormous stove to keep her warm at night inside of our lovely bedroom. And then we also have a sitting area for her that has been completely devoured, I think, by some sort of an animal. And our vanity to make herself beautiful in the morning. I can still see her sitting here in front of this vanity, applying her makeup and getting herself ready to go out for the day. There's still some makeup products left behind. The souvenir from somewhere around the country. The New Testament, definitely it could have been, we are in the Bible Belt right now and these people were very, very religious, and it still are. And they still are. Even a pen left behind in here. Wow. Fortunately, no name yet. Wonderful car on top of the vanity as well. I think this cabinet was used to store all her clothing inside. Oh, we got a date over here. It says the year 2000. Okay, this is the local newspaper with the year 2000 on there. Some clothing of her, a nice uniform. Wonderful. It's crazy to think that somebody would leave this behind. Her children are still alive to this day and they don't seem to care about the former items of their mother. Even her purse laying underneath a piece of roof tile. Let's place it nicely over here top of this bench okay now we can go further we're gonna make our way into the kitchen of this place a very ordinary kitchen as you can see also a very American style I think this kitchen has probably never been changed out throughout the lifetime of this house it feels it feels one with this place I love the design on it all the plates and cups and glasses and everything is still left in here as you can see even this pot where once the plants used to be inside the glasses that she never got to wash even a brush to wash them still hanging here cube caddy cube caddy okay we don't have these kind of things in the European Union. We mostly use plastic to make uh, ice cubes, but uh, hmm, interesting. Some last dishes also still left here. Wow. Even the washing and drying machine is inside of the kitchen here. Was wondering if there are any products still left in the fridge but as you can see that has luckily been emptied out way before stove give thanks unto the lord religious artifacts will probably be all throughout this house a wonderful stove down below now our pots and pans all still left in the cabinets And everywhere throughout the house, we're gonna see that it's completely falling apart. Here in the corner of the kitchen, we have a calendar hanging on the wall and it displays the year April 1992. But this is a bit controversial because we saw the newspaper from the year 2000, but why would she have a calendar hanging here from the year April 1992? And she even wrote on there, left home. 
operation on the 15th and the 17th of April 1992. Hmm. And I would change out my calendar in eight years time. I think she passed away in the year 1992, but somebody has been in here after that period, maybe to store some things or do something else. And here's it's written in May of 1992, nurse home. Okay, very strange. I am not 100% sure about the story of this place. But here we end up in a very fascinating room of this household. This used to be the dining area where the family came together when the man was still alive in 1980 and all the children were still young and living in this place. They would all have dinner together at this table. Ah, must have been wonderful back in the day. The table is still made, everything is still on there, but the room is completely crumbling apart. The roof jingles are falling onto the table. I love this, this display cabinet that we have here at the end of the room with the glasses still nicely in there. Let me just go over there. Let me show you. The glasses are still in here, even though the whole room is collapsing. Very surreal. You can see here in the corner of the room, it's all falling down. We haven't found anything yet with our name on there, but I'm searching like frantically to find something with our name on. Maybe some letters or something like that. Wow, look here in the corner. We have the ironing board. And this is definitely a piece from the 1950s. A wooden ironing board, as you can see. And then the board itself. What a fantastic piece. I've actually never seen such an ironing board before. And then attached to the dining area, we have the bathroom slash toilet, I assume. With a bathtub. In most American homes you see a bathtub. A shower is not very common, especially in abandoned places. And the hotels that I sleep in, it's always a bathtub with a shower conversion into it. A wonderful side table inside of the bathroom. Wow. You can even see the construction of the house exposed over here. Woodworms, just decay, leakaging is taking over this place. This is crazy. Have a look over here on the floor. Wow. Totally insane to see. This drawer still standing here. Everything still left in there. And we got some papers over here. Let me just quickly look. Mrs. Turner, Jack Turner. Okay. We got another letter over here. Mrs. Turner again. But the first name is very unreadable. Okay. Another one. Mrs. Chet Turner, I think it says over here. Chet Turner, that's a name that I've never heard before. And this is a very serene sight. When you're standing here in a dining room, you can still see the car outside that I first showed you when I got into this place. Very serene sight. As if they could come back home drive their car away, or drive their car right into the driveway. Wow. Another drawer standing here at the end. Some newspapers on there, some ornaments, some fallen porcelain. Another letter. Neil Mayers Turner, it says over here. And this is from 1985. Neil is supposedly her husband. He passed away in 1985. And here we have the cap, her hat to go to the funeral with. So this is probably something that she kept over here. It's the date that he passed away. 
a cap to go to the funeral for her griefs, maybe. She left it over there. Oh, insane. And then we have her ironing, her iron still standing here. Gospel songs. She maybe even sang in the core. Strap. What a fascinating place. One last overlook of this wonderful dining area. And then let's wander into this room. This is another bedroom in the place. But as you can see, it's in total disrepair. The whole ceiling over there has cracked down. And you definitely don't want to be inside of this house when it's pouring outside. Luckily, that doesn't happen a lot in Alabama, but when it happens, stay out of this place. And I think this was just a spare guest bedroom. The other one that we were inside, that's over there, had a lot of memories and a lot of blankets and everything still left in there. So that's why I believe that that's, that was her last room that she slept in. We have a lovely bed standing over here in a, in a room. Also a 1950s vintage piece. Roof shingles laying on top of the bed. And even a mirror from a vanity, presumably, also lying here for some weird reason. Her clothing still hanging on the coat rack. Wow, these were our last pieces of clothing that she wore. And then in the corner of the room, we have this grand piano standing here. Oh no, this you don't call a grand piano, this you, I'm not sure what you call this one. We will see another piano in this place, and that's a grand piano. Let's test this one out. I think after all these years, it's dysfunctional. I love the design that's on this one. Very beautiful. And she had these pictures above here. And I think this was just to commemorate her husband that passed away in 1985. These are all the same men. Bob Hope and Paramount Pictures, as it says on there. Okay, it might have been... No, these are three different men. Henry Honda, Bob Hope. This might have been our man. And those, those two people are famous people that I don't know. They were probably before my time. Oh, the candle holders that are on here are also very fascinating. You could hold this candle like this and walk through the house with it before there was electricity in places like these. A drawer standing in this room as well. A broken horse inside of here. <laughs> oh, the other piece is laying on top. Look how these glasses are laying here on top of this booklet. Little warrior with the glasses on top of there. Wow, it's fascinating to see. There's newspapers inside of here, pictures. Hair nets, as you can see. Wow. And this on the ground. Oh, I think this is like a coupon. You can, yeah, you could collect these little coupons and then get a prize at the end or get like a discount on something in the store. Wow. She was almost done collecting these stamps. I'm gonna place this over here. Don't think it belongs on the ground. Another door to come inside of the place. And here used to be some sort of a dining area that has now completely collapsed into the floor after these years of abandonment. Look at that. The whole floor is broken over there. Wow. And the ceiling as well. Completely devoured by nature. A display cabinet standing over here with the plate still neatly in there. So everything collapsed over there. And this is just neatly standing here for years and years on end. And in this room, we have another vanity. A beautifully designed one. With drawers down below. And is this a mama plate on there? Yes, it is a mama plate. With these heart shaped cushions still on top. Beautiful piece, literally. Wow. 
And that leads us into one of the most spectacular rooms of this entire household. This is by far this one with the grand piano standing there in the hallway. And the sad part about this room is actually, there's a rumor that spreads around and I don't know if it's true, but it says that they found her lying dead on this couch. And there are still some imprints in the couch that look like blood, I think, or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm just telling me what, what, what other people told me. These look like stains and the story might be true. <sighs> A wonderful grand piano in this place. This is the first one we actually see in the United States. I never thought that this would be possible. Worship Himal. See if this beauty still plays. Ooh, this one still plays. Have a look at the insides. Wow. Fascinating. This is an elephant book holder here on the side of the piano with a wonderful painting on the wall. It's a Victorian area, the Renaissance era. And this looks like this is in some sort of a French garden from a castle. But again, that story of the couch, it's very devastating to see and to hear and to even think that it might be true. We have this lovely one standing here across it. Beautiful imprints on there. Of an American farmland, as you can see. A shed down there. Farmers working the fields. Wow. Beautiful piece. Then one more here in the corner. Oh, we can even see a town hall on here, a church over there. Wow. Here we got one of the first pictures inside of this one. Greetings from Harry. It's from 1974. March of 1974. Oh, this is an interesting book. Etiquette. It's probably table manners. There's a handwritten note in there, as I just saw. Let's see where it was. Yes, as you can see, we got a handwritten letter in this in this booklet. Wow. Beautiful to see. What a room. I was just looking here in the drawer and even her shoes are still left inside of here. Isn't that just fascinating to see? Let's make our way now through this doorway. Let's go into the hallway of this household. Here's the front door of the house, completely boarded up at some point. Maybe some homeless people were trying to get into this place, trying to live in here. So they boarded it up. A wonderful hallway, typically American in my opinion. I love this wallpaper that we have over here. Wow, it's sort of the same one that we saw on the upholstery couch. You can see an American town hall on there. You can see a church on there. Even a chip. Have a look at this hallway. There's even this drawer standing over here. Two people at a bar. Some carvings down here. Wow. Even the storage cabinet underneath the stairway where all the gardening equipment has been stored. The saw next to it. Oh, fascinating sight. There's one more room before we go upstairs. Here to the right. With all her clothing yet again hanging here. Let's open this one up. Let's see what's inside. Got this couch standing here to the corner. This also used to be some sort of a bedroom of somebody that lived in this place. She should have got a few children, so maybe this was from one of our children. 
that slept in here. It's actually a wonderful couch. Wow. Wonderful, a Pearl Street one. It was more interested in what we have over here. A heart-shaped form probably for a celebration. Seems like a wedding or something like that. Oh my God, I was standing on here. The whole floor has collapsed. As you can see, I should probably go off this. Wow. A lot of flowers as well. Laying here in this room. They seem most likely for a funeral. Oh my God. She probably all kept them from her husband passed away. If any of these standing here in the middle of the room. And that is going to lead us upstairs to the next part of this household and this story. Oh, I can't stop looking at this wallpaper that we have over here. I love it. It's from the time that America got first colonized. This is how the cities would look like back in that time period. And they still do, some of them still do now. And I love that. I love to see the history. Of the United States. And now we come upstairs. Oh, that leakage that we have over here. The whole ceiling is turning brown. And the wonderful treasure chest here in front of us. The first surprise from the upstairs rooms. This looks like a true pirate treasure chest that they would carry in a ship that got lost and that you had to find with a treasure map. Fortunately, there's nothing inside of value. Just some cushions, a purse, and some other things. There are even pictures inside of this treasure chest of dogs, hunting dogs. Wow. Let's close this beauty up. This is how you would turn on the light of the upper floor. This little court doesn't function anymore, unfortunately. But here we have the upstairs. There's even the doorway leading outside. Wow. Let me turn on my light because everybody can see us. We can definitely open this one up. I think so. We would wait for this car to pass. And then, and then you can see at this little balcony outside. This doesn't seem to open anymore, but you can definitely tell. Let's take my camera through here. They could stand down here outside, probably have a coffee. Wow. Let's close this up. Let's go further with our tour. And here we come into the first upstairs bedroom. Roof jingles hanging down and this one as well. But what a wonderful bedroom. There's even still a baby crib left in this one. The picture of a dog at the front. Wow. So at one point, her children would be lying in here. Maybe the grandchildren also came to this household and she would use this baby crib to accommodate them. We have this drawer standing here in the middle of this room. Wonderful piece yet again. A coat rack here in the corner. Some more wonderful furnitures. What's this? Oh, this is a Swiss knife still lying here. Some booklets left behind. And then here behind we have another bedroom. And I think this one hasn't been used in a very long time. It's still made, it's very beautiful. The cushions are still at the front. And there is a head left behind. Presumably from one of the last people that slept in this room. And look at this ventilator that we have standing over here. Very vintage one. I 
I love this upstairs, maybe even more than the downstairs. Just how clean and neat it still is after all these years that this place got abandoned. And now we have a double bedroom. So she might have a lot of children in this place. From counting the bedrooms, I think she had maybe five or even six children. These beds are also still sort of made. They have been decaying over the years, falling apart. But all the, the mattresses are still there. The blankets are still there. The bed frames, they look immaculate. The wall behind it is falling apart. And then here in the corner of the room, we have yet again another vanity. The drawer to that side. Whew. And have a look over here in the middle of this room is lying this vacuum cleaner straight from a sci-fi movie that's how they used to make them back in the day wow i love the design of this piece but it would be very impractical to clean a room with this one and a very small nozzle as well at the front look how this hose has been made this is definitely from the 1940s or 1950s, still left in this room. Wow. I also got a few weird machines standing here. Oh, I think this is the bottom piece of a blender. Hamilton Beach, definitely a blender. Wow. Case from some glasses, some other things down there. time to leave this place behind. I don't want to, but it's already getting dark outside and we need to still move towards Tennessee right now. So yeah, unfortunately, you have to leave these places behind. But I am happy that I could document it. Let me show you still the outside of this place. Let's open the latch, you come straight onto the car. You can see over here, but very importantly, explore abandoned places. Always left, leave them in the state that you found them. That was with the clo door closed behind us, like that. And this one also nicely closed. You can see over here their wonderful family car still standing here in the backyard, totally overgrown. The leaves are still on there. The roof has completely fallen on top of it. Let's see if it's open. Yes. You can still see the inside of the place. Oh, this looks like a couch inside. The nature is already growing on top of there. Oh my God. Let's close this beauty up. I really believe that this is a Buick. The plate of Alabama still on there. Wow. This used to be the backyard of the household and then for the house itself that we have over here it looks wonderful in the dark as you can see what a beautiful place they even have some sort of a swing here on the front porch where they could sit outside and enjoy themselves and this over here, everybody, is the front view of the household. The bushes have completely taken over, but what a wonderful estate is this. You can almost call this a mansion, but it's definitely not. It's still a house, but you can almost call this a mansion. Oh, there's nothing left of the front porch. You don't even see it anymore. Wow, over there is the front door. <laughs> That's crazy. A quick look on this side and that's that balcony that I showed you earlier over there wow you can don't see the pillars anymore you can see nothing anymore ah Reno can I ask you to hold the camera for a second 
So everybody, well, in the evening here we explored for a very long time, but I'm very happy that we could document this place. And I'm very happy that you watched me going through it. Thank you very much. With that all said, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're near here, and write a nice comment in the comment section. There's also a link in the description for Patreon, there you can support the channel and help us out with going on these adventures. Thank you all very much, and I will see you next week in our epic exploration. Bye-bye. Love you very much. Thank <laughs> you.